So you want people to stop rating you. Well, I can't make any guarantee that will stop happening, but what I can do is guide you in the right direction to reduce the chance of the Raiders being successful. Welcome to episode three of my base building series. In this episode, I will be picking up where I left off in episode two. I will be demonstrating how to expand your base upwards with tips throughout the video. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, you can find the links to both of these in the description. These episodes will guide you through the steps that I've taken to get this far from the beginning. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Since the last episode, I have been raided. So let's get started with tip number one. Don't dismantle any doors that have been damaged. At the time of this video, I was experiencing business loss and I was really shooken up. The mistake that I made here was I dismantled a door and it caused me to lose the eight sheet metal that I spent upgrading it. It's a lot safer to just repair the door with metal sheets instead of just dismantling it and losing the resources. After I realized I dismantled the door and all I got back was lumber, I had to grab a door that was not damaged. I went to an area of the base that suffered no damage and luckily I had a door that I could use. In my opinion, one thing that can help keep things less chaotic is to log out with a lockable door in your inventory. This will help seal a room so loot can be stored in a time of need when you need to gather just a few materials for repairs. Currently at the time of this video, it's update 1.6.0 and it cost a total of 2C4 to blow up a plated door. So it cost whoever did this a total of 8C4 to blow up the four doors that I had that led to this room. What I believe allowed the raiders to pinpoint this room was the placement of the furnaces. Whenever logs are in the inventory of the furnace, logs will show on the right side of the furnace to wherever the pipe is. The logs show through the walls and I know I had logs in the inventory of the furnace whenever I logged out that night. Yes, this was a major business loss for me, but it just wasn't quite enough to make me want to quit the game. They really didn't take a lot of stuff, and as you can see, I'm able to just fill in these spots with doors. Now this leads me to tip number two. Log out with building materials in case you need to craft certain parts to repair your base with. I'm gonna jump a month ahead really quick. Now this is where I had a full build and I got raided. And you can see the destruction it did and it eliminated all of the platforms that allowed me to walk and travel up to my third story. And that's why I think it's a really good idea to keep those materials close by so when you log in, you'll already have them there in your inventory. Now keep in mind that this is advice from a paranoid solo player that's afraid of always having his base raided. So if you don't have the worries of being raided, then I would probably log out with ammo and other things that are more important than materials. Okay, I'm placing my last door and now this is pretty safe. My outside door is metal, so they would have to use explosives to get in and then they would have to cut down all of the wood doors. So I'm in a safe place and I can put all of my stuff back into my crates. And now I'm going to create some tools so I can gather some materials. Right now I mainly need wood and I need to turn the wood into lumber and I need to go mine some iron ore and to create some sheet metal. Okay so I just cut some logs and I turned those into lumber and now I'm going to patch up the platform areas so I can walk on my second story again. It usually snaps into place. Um, I've noticed that you have to stand in certain areas to get it to snap right. So just be aware of that if you're having issues placing the platforms. Another thing that can cause issues with platform placement is the door. If the door is on the inside of wherever you're placing the platform, it's possible it will not allow the platform to place. You might need to pull the door open instead of push it open in order to place the platform. Okay, so now that I've got the base patched up, it's safe enough that I can store things in here and I can go on some mining trips. I've crafted a pickaxe and I'm gonna go mine some rocks so I can repair the foundations. It costs far less resources to repair instead of to create. I wanna repair all of the parts I have 
in case somebody else brings some more explosives and then destroys my foundations. So all I'm going to do is I have my rocks in my inventory and I'm just pressing F to repair the wall. And you can see the bar slowly jumps up as I apply stone. Now that I have the base patched up and mostly repaired, it's time to begin the expansion process on the second story. I've chopped a lot of logs to create 3x4 walls, and if you find and learn a walls 2 guide, it allows you to create the 3x4 wall window. This window can come in handy in a time of need if somebody is attacking your business. You can create these lockable wooden shutters that open and close, and to do this it's in the base building tab, under structures, and under doors. Two shutters have to be created to fully seal the window, and the good thing about these is that they can be locked and upgraded to plated. I will be placing two of these windows upstairs and close to my bed, so if I die and respawn, I can access a chest and a window pretty quickly. Alright, so now it's time for what I call the business premium tip. This tip is to upgrade all of your exterior base parts to plated as soon as you can. A vehicle is a raider's best friend because it assists with jumping on higher stories that you think cannot be accessed. The trick is to not rely on wooden base parts to protect your storage boxes. If they can find a way to get in, they probably will. Before my base was fully built, every occurrence that I had of getting raided was involved with a wooden base part. This is why I strongly recommend to not rely on wooden base parts and to upgrade all wooden parts as soon as you possibly can. Wooden base parts can also be shot through very easily due to cracks. Upgrading your base to plated will eliminate a lot of possible issues. So while I'm building my base, I try to calculate how much iron ore I will need to mine in order to upgrade everything to plated. And here's the quick reference that I use. I know that it cost a total of 64 sheet metal to upgrade 4 wooden walls to plated, and I know that in order to get 64 sheet metal, I have to mine 128 iron ore. Every iron ore node has the chance to give you 38 iron ore, so that will be 3.5 iron ore nodes to upgrade 4 walls. I'm crafting the last three walls that I need in order to complete my second story and after I get this completed I'm going to add a few items to my base and move some things around a little bit. Tip number four. Tip number four is avoid placing objects on foundations that you intend to place a 3x4x4 platform as the roof. I've made this mistake several times with storage chest and here's an example of what I'm talking about. Platforms are held up by columns on every corner, and if something is in the way of the placement, then it may not be able to be placed unless whatever is in the way of it is packed up. This is not a very big issue here, but if I had storage chest placed, then I would have to remove everything inside of the storage chest to pack it up, and this could just cause a lot of extra time. Okay, so I've placed all of the walls around my second story outside layer, and now it's time to upgrade everything to plated. Once I have everything upgraded, I'll be able to move my storage chest up here and it'll be a lot safer than having everything on the first story. Since my bed got destroyed, I created a new one and I'm going to place it up here since I'm moving everything up here anyways. Tip number five. Utilize the stone fireplace as another means of storage. In the utilities tab, you can create it and it's an extra 10 luxurious storage slots. Tip number six, these water barrels that you see can be packed up and taken back to the base. This is something that I did not know for a long time and these barrels can store a lot of water. It's a great item to have in your base and you can find it almost anywhere in the map. Okay, so I've gone on a big mining trip and I have a lot of sheet metal to upgrade these walls with. I'm upgrading my walls before I create any more platforms or upgrade any more platforms. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm prioritizing my second story wall layer so I hide all of the wooden base parts. This will greatly reduce the chance that I get my base tampered with. I have three more walls to upgrade to plated and then my second story layer will be completely metal. I feel a lot more secure about my base and I won't feel like somebody can just take it out with melee weapons on top of a vehicle. 
So this is complete. And now the only thing that can really get in here is explosives. Okay, so now that all of the walls have been upgraded on the second story, I'm going to start upgrading the platforms that I'm currently standing on to plated and move up all of my chest that hold all of my stuff. Since this is the new area that I'll have my chest at, I'm going to fortify it with some extra doors. This will further complicate things for anybody that tries to raid me if they blow up the front door. The reason why I have decided to build all of this on the outside layer of my second story is because I think that they know the basic layout of my base and I think they would try to come through the front door again. That doesn't mean they will. They could easily just attack the side of my base and I'm, I'll be done for just like that. Once I found out that it was possible to create shutters, I was greatly relieved because I've had several occurrences where I've gotten shot through my windows. Two shutters are required to completely seal the window and they can also be upgraded to metal. They are in the doors tab and only cost two lumber and one scrap metal per shutter. And I highly recommend having a few window walls with shutters added because this could be what you need in order to defend your base at a certain time. Okay, so now it's time to start placing these 3x4x4 platforms. Please remember whenever you're placing these platforms that you don't want to have anything that's going to obstruct the placement. This is not only putting a roof over my head, but it's also creating a floor for my third story. Tip number 7. Since I have a bush sticking in my base, it's causing a few platforms to be off a small amount. This doesn't mean that the base is ruined, but I still think that it would be just a good idea to avoid bushes sticking inside your base. If somebody was below me under this wooden platform, it would be possible for me to shoot them, and it would also be possible for them to shoot me. That's why I highly recommend upgrading your wooden parts to plate it as soon as you can. Now that I've placed the 3x4x4 platform, I can replace my stone fireplace. I just wanted you to see this process so you don't make the mistake that I've made several times with storage chests. I don't have to worry about the platforms now, so I'm going to move all of my storage crates upstairs. I think it would be really cool to add a dolly to the game that allows you to tote your crates to different areas in your base. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you agree with me, just put a percent sign dolly in your comments somewhere. Moving everything from the bottom level to the second level took around 30 minutes, so try to remember that when you're getting ready to expand your levels up. I'm almost done with the second story, and this base is about to be prepared to begin placement of the third story walls. One last finishing touch that I'm going to do is put shutters on all of the windows for safety so nobody can see me and I'll have the option to open or close the shutters. Tip number 8. On the official servers, only 250 total base parts can be placed on a plot sign area. There's an easy way to track this by using the chat box. I'm going to open the chat box by pressing enter and I'm going to type exclamation mark base. Here it will show how many base parts are placed and how long it will be until it decays. The decay timer can be reset by placing something or opening or closing a door. Don't worry, the base that I'm currently standing in is roughly 60% of 250 base parts. With this being said, I encourage you to create your own ideas for your base slash business. The base that I've built here is a great way to learn the mechanics of base building in Miscreated. It's a very simple yet strong base and I'm sure if pencil and paper were applied to this idea, it could be modified to be even stronger. To sum this base up, it lasted three months before it got raided. It was three stories high with my loot room on the third story and the raiders only found my two large storage crates. The raiders did not take a lot out of my base, nor did they find the other storage containers, so I got really lucky. The biggest mistake that I made with this base was I wasted my placement counts on trying to build a garage for a vehicle. This attracted a lot of attention because the garage wall was only one story high. This was not a good usage of base parts, and in the next episode, I'll show you how to build a garage with much less base parts. I encourage you to leave tips in the comments below so new players can see them and hopefully benefit from them. 
If you learned anything from this video, please leave the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thank you for watching and I appreciate your business.